Last month, as we have covered extensively on this show, a disinformation governance board formed at the Department of Homeland Security with the intention of coordinating countering misinformation related to Homeland Security, specifically focused on irregular migration and Russia. Nina Yankovic, who studies the intersection of democracy and technology in Central and Eastern Europe as a Wilson Center Global Fellow, was selected to lead the board. Now, almost four weeks later, the disinformation board has been paused and Yankovic has resigned. In a new article, writer Sam Adler-Bell makes the case for why the swift death of the White House's disinformation board could be a good thing, arguing that liberals' fixation with disinformation allows them to lie to themselves. Adler-Bell argues that disinformation was the liberal establishment's response to the, quote, psychic wound of 2016. Joining us now to discuss is freelance writer and co-host of Know Your Enemy, a Descent Magazine podcast, Sam Adler-Bell. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I really liked uh, this article quite a, quite a bit. It, I agreed with it. It kind of makes some points I've made on the show a couple times, so we're glad uh, to have you with us. But, you know, for those uh, of our audience just tuning in, take us through... You know, what is, is the argument you're making here? How, how this whole disinformation framing is a really, was a really specific response to, you know, Democrats losing in 2016 and is kind of the thing they've gone, you know, all in on as being like the thing that explains what we're experiencing. Yeah, so I kind of think of it, you know, the, the Principal Skinner Simpsons meme where he says, am I out of touch? No, it's the children who are wrong. Um, it's kind of like that, the entire liberal establishment uh, Trump won, and they had an opportunity to look at themselves and see whether, you know, they had made mistakes, whether, um, you know, elite politics had some problems with it, whether, you know, there's problems with neoliberalism, um, whether there were actual any material realities that these right-wing grievances were responding to. And instead they said, no, I'm not out of touch. We're not out of touch. Um, it's the information that is wrong. Um, <laughs> and, um, Basically, they invented, there's been this invention of a new kind of expertise, which is disinformation expertise. All of my thinking about this is really influenced by this excellent piece by Joe Bernstein um, in Harper's from last year, um, which sort of describes how this new kind of expertise was invented in the wake of the 2016 election. But in effect, what I'm arguing is that um, for liberals, it was just this deeply confusing and scary moment, right? Like, we saw Trump as obviously incompetent and nefarious and even evil. And how could it be that there were all these people who didn't see him that way? Um, and instead of looking at the sort of material conditions that might have produced him or, or doing politics, um, they invented a new kind of science. You know, they replaced a political problem uh, of Trumpism and, po and right wing populism with a scientific problem. And that meant that, you know, these new disinformation experts and journalists could be the protagonists of um, responding to Trumpism. Um, and they didn't need to think about doing new politics at all. Hmm. It kind of feels like a, a longer trend that has existed among liberals where they respond to crises with piling on with te technocrats, technocracy, making somehow uh, credibility determinations about the people in charge, like that's going to that's gonna save us all, get people with more credentials and more esteem or somehow going to work out these thornier issues. But I'm curious if you've given any thought to the, the moments that predated 2016, because I was reflecting on the fact after you know the recent shooting event that there were these these right wing issues that were happening. There was the pizza gates of the world. There were the the Sandy Hook hoaxes of the world that did seem to lend credibility to the idea that there was this information problem where people were believing some pretty outlandish things because of what trusted news hosts on the right, not technocrats per se, but these individual figures that had a lot of credibility in certain political communities were spreading. And I wonder, uh, you know, if that presaged the Democrats' belief that something needed to be done about misinformation or disinformation. What do you do in that instance? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think I agree that there's been obviously a problem generated by the combination of new technology, social media, the, the, quick, the speed with which false information can spread. Um, but my basic contention remains that, you know, the, the suppressing disinformation doesn't work. Um, it doesn't stop people from finding information that they want to believe. Um, propaganda works because people want to believe it in, in most circumstances. And if we imagine a world where this disinformation could actually be suppressed, that's a more disturbing world than the one we 
live in, um, because I think it would require the empowerment both of the government and tech platforms to do way more suppression and sort of um, decision making about what counts as safe or true information than we should be comfortable with. So I do think there's a problem. There's problems to be dealt with with like false and dangerous information um, in the way that it spreads on the Internet. But I don't think that um, disinformation, this new kind of discipline is the is the solution. Yeah. And it's just it's it's so cringy, I think, how obsessed with the concept of disinformation much of the mainstream media has become. I, I, I think the like the apex of this was, I believe it was CNN, and I can't remember the exact details of the incident. Where they went to, do you remember when they went to that, that woman's house, that like Trump woman's house, who, who, because she had shared something on Facebook that was like, but it was Russian created, and they were like, aha, you're the fake news, don't you? How do you feel that you were duped by that? But she's like a real person who actually does like Trump and like agrees with the things that were being said in the Facebook group, even if some fake person had created it. It, it, it was very right. like, aha, we, we pulled the mask off the person. But like, that doesn't matter to anyone. They agreed with the underlying thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way to avoid uh, actually taking seriously these grievances and demands. I mean, I'm not sympathetic to the content of right wing demands. I don't think, you know, that the problem with America is that there's too much immigration or, you know, that the police don't have enough money. Um, <laughs> but we have to the, the minimum condition of being able to do politics is that you recommend you, you recognize that your opponents are making democratic demands. They're actually responsive to real grievances. And then the, the challenge for the left is to come up with a better answer, a more satisfying one. Um, which, uh, you know, satisfies people's, you know, grievances and fears, but in a less destructive manner from my perspective. So I, I agree. Do you think Democrats are genuinely naive or unable to see the legitimate concerns that were raised about, let's say, Hillary Clinton in 2016 or, you know, Joe Biden or any host of Democratic candidates in the 2020 primary? Do you think that they really don't know that people are sincerely concerned about what it means for Hillary to have, you know, taken money to make those Wall Street street speeches, et cetera? Or do you think that they know better, but they're but some combination of their, you know, donor base and their political commitments keep them from actually being responsive to, as you put it, the democratic demands of the populace? Uh, I think it's hard to say. Like, I think ideology works that way, where it's both um, sort of self-protective and also sort of motivated by material interests. Um, I mean, I think the fascinating thing about the dis disinformation situation is that, um, you, like, think about what Obama has done since uh, Trump was elected. Um, mm -hmm. He's leading, he's, he's showing up at these conferences um, uh, about disinformation and sort of becoming a sort of uh, you know, an avatar of this new expertise, um, instead of sort of trying to lead the Democratic Party and, um, you know, articulate an alternative vision. Um, and it's a, I just think that what has happened is that disinformation makes these sort of liberal technocratic um, responses, which may have led to right wing populism in the first place, seem to be the solution to right-wing populism when they're more likely to exacerbate the very conditions that led to Trump than anything else. Mm. Well, Sam, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back with more Rising in just a minute.